I've been in an abusive relationship with a note-taking for almost a year now. At first, I used to take absolutely no notes, trying to hold everything into my head, convinced that it's actually much more important what you know than what's written on the paper somewhere. But everything changed when I discovered Zeocasting. Why do I sound like an avatar intro? But that all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. But with that came another issue. I became obsessed with building a perfect Zeocasting system. And a large part of it, and the first step on this journey, was finding the greatest app out there that would allow me to do this. If you are in a similar boat, either you are just starting out and don't know which software to begin with, or you're wondering whether the option you're using right now could be improved, then buckle up. For the record, I kind of assume here you are familiar with the method itself. In case you're not, I have a dedicated video specifically for general principles of Zettelkasten, so if you have not already, go check this out. Without further ado, let's dive straight into it. My name is Artem, I'm a computational neuroscience student and researcher. On this channel we explore mental and digital tools to help us study and learn more effectively. If you're interested, consider subscribing to the channel not to miss anything. Today I would like to talk about how to approach the world of Zellcasting and the world of note-taking apps in general. And sure, I will briefly talk about some popular options out there and what I use personally on a daily basis. But the main takeaway from this video I think should be the mindset shift with which to approach the existing software and anything that might come out in the future. Let me start with a parable. No, I'm not crazy, I think it's just an amazing analogy. One man is walking through the forest when he sees a lumberjack who, all sweaty and frustrated, trying to cut down a tree using a very rusty blunt axe, but obviously to no avail. So the man says to the lumberjack, Mate, why don't you sharpen your axe or get a new one? Don't you see this one chops terribly? I'd love to, says the lumberjack, but I don't have the time. See all these trees? I'm supposed to chop them down by the end of today. The man tried to convince the poor lumberjack that by first investing a few hours into sharpening the axe, he would actually gain a lot more, because he'll chop way faster afterwards. But the lumberjack wasn't enthusiastic about the idea of losing a few hours, and so the man finally gave up explaining. Do what you think is best, he said, and continued his journey through the woods. An hour later, he sees another lumberjack, desperately sharpening his axe. The man comes up to him and says, Hey, I'm, I'm no expert, but even I see that this axe is razor sharp already. I mean, it's almost literally glowing. Why do you keep polishing it? Aren't you supposed to get rid of these? He adds, pointing at the thicket nearby. Yeah, answers the lumberjack, but it's not flawless. I can't afford walking around chopping trees with an inefficient axe. I need to perfect my tools first. Plus, if I make a custom handle, which fits my grip better than this one, it would save me almost half a second on each tree. These are the examples of two opposite ends of the spectrum, where the axe represents the application for note-taking, or any software for that matter. And the sweet spot is more or less in the middle. Yes, you do need to spend some time choosing the application, but you have to stop when fiddling with it starts to bring more harm than good. Here's the bottom line doesn't really matter too much what you choose right now. If for some reason you don't like it, you can always relatively easy make the transition later on. Remember, Lumen built his Zettelkasten and using paper cards. It's much better to start building your second brain with the tools you have, even with a text pad, than to spend a month looking for the perfect app and customizing the look of it without actually making a single note. If it does the job fine, don't go and look if there is a better app out there. Always be aware of the dopamine factor. Your current app feels dull and familiar, while other pieces of software you have not tried out yet feel new and exciting. This is the dopamine talking, the molecule that drives you to seek novelty and feel pleasure from experiencing new things. I remember one time when I had everything nicely set up in Obsidian, but then, one day I come across a video about craft, and it's like a cocaine hit. No, seriously, I was super excited to wake up one morning just to transfer my notes from Obsidian to craft. In retrospect, however, 
I don't see a single rational reason to do it, other than the fact that craft was new and had cool highlighting options. I literally spent weeks jumping between the apps, watching YouTube videos of somebody else's workflows, adjusting the color gradients of the fonts and downloading plugins. Well, I can't watch lectures right now, because what if I take notes in a wrong app and the headings are not properly stylized? It would be a disaster. Not too long ago, though, I have realized the danger of this app I happened to fall into. I actually completed a full cycle. In the end, I happily settled down with a simple app I used to begin my journey almost a year ago. But since you are expecting some software advice, I will briefly talk about the most popular options out there and what I recommend to get started and what I personally use on a daily basis. Let's start with Notion. I know, technically, Notion is not advertised as the Zettelkasten app per se, but it's a very popular note-taking app and I've seen people trying to build second brains there. Don't get me wrong, Notion is a very great app. I use it to write video scripts, to keep track of my personal and academic goals, exams, deadlines, and other tasks during the semester. But in my opinion, Notion is fundamentally not suitable for taking Zettelkasten type of notes. Here's the thing, it's a purely an online app. So your notes are stored on Notion servers somewhere. Honestly, you don't have a, like a proper way to export your notes. So basically, you are giving someone complete control over your second brain. To me, it's not an issue of privacy. I don't store any nuclear codes in my notes, and I personally don't care whether somebody reads them or not. I want, however, this system to be autonomous and future-proof. Remember, Lumen Slipbox suited him for decades. The real power of this method is when you rediscover ideas you've written down months or years prior, and you see how they connect to newer ones and have a fresh look. So I want my network of ideas to be accessible years later. But what if something happens to Notion? The, the company shuts down, the, the app itself gets deprecated, or, you know, their servers blow up. I know, it sounds quite unlikely now, but who knows what'll happen 5-10 years down the road. I don't want my thoughts, ideas, and insights I spend so much time collecting to crucially depend on Notion in such a way. That's why I personally highly recommend you. If you want to get really serious and committed to building your second brain that will serve you years in the future, choose an app that supports offline storage and open formats like Markdown. But more on that later. Roam Research. Built for and advertised as the Zettelkasten app with bidirectional linking, graphs and all the good stuff. But it has the same fundamental issue of being hosted online and requiring syncing to their servers, which is why Roam was never an option for me to begin with. Plus, it is kind of pricey. Remnote. Same issue. Your notes live online and you can't set up to store them locally. One very amazing feature, though, is the inbuilt spaced repetition, which for someone can be a huge advantage. There are a lot of other apps I have not mentioned but they have more or less the same functionality and similar issues, namely being hosted online. Not to waste any more of your time, let me tell you right away about the solution that right now does the amazing job for me. Obsidian. Obsidian is a very great app which operates on top of your local text files. That means that all of the notes you take are actually just plain markdown files stored on your hard drive. You'll have access to them if Obsidian shuts down, or even if in post-apocalyptic world your laptop is the only one which survives. It's all stored right in there. That was the main selling point for me to use Obsidian. Zettelkasten is nothing else but an investment, and it's better to use something that's safe and future-proof. Plus, Obsidian is also free to use. It has a great variety of features like customizable graph view, proper latex support, and a lot of very helpful plugins which are also free. For example, I can convert my notes to Anki flashcards and insert citations from my Zotero database. And that's just a couple of examples. Honestly, Obsidian and its plugins deserve a dedicated video. So I guess the take-home message is like this. If you're only starting out and don't know which app to begin with, use Obsidian. 
If you are already using something else that does the job done and you are happy with what you have, stick with it. Content and the quantity of notes is much more important than the actual software you are using. Again, if later down the road you realize that you want to get serious and committed about your second brain and you have concerns about your current solution being future-proof, you can always relatively easily make the transition in just a few hours, transfer the notes into something else. That's all I have for you today. If you are interested in learning more about my personal Obsidian workflow, let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, press the like button, share it with your friends and consider subscribing to the channel. Stay tuned for more interesting stuff coming up. Goodbye and thanks for the interesting knowledge.